welcome. This is the first in a series of tutorials we'll do on GarageBand. GarageBand is a tool uh, to create musical compositions. Uh, you may be familiar with it on the uh, Apple Macintosh computer. They have GarageBand uh, for the computer too. But this particular flavor of GarageBand works on the iPad. In terms of working with students, it's a great tool to introduce them uh, into uh, the idea of creating music, uh, in this case on an iPad. When you start GarageBand, what you're looking at is usually uh, the My Songs window, and it just shows all the songs that have been created on this particular iPad. And if I go through, and there's one that I've been working on, and I want to uh, continue to work on it a little bit more, all I have to do is click on it and it'll open up and I can begin editing it. A couple of things right off the bat that you'll notice is that uh, this particular song is made up of six tracks. It's got a couple drum instruments, one classic drum machine, it's got a bass, a couple keyboards, and a grand piano. At the top of the screen uh, are labeled My Songs Instruments. There's a keyboard, we'll talk about that in a minute. There's uh, the track window, there's some um, controllers for rewinding, playing, and recording audio. You've got a master audio control uh, slider there. You've got the loop tool uh, for the loops, controlling some of the musical loops that are in here. You've got the uh, volume control and uh, echo and reverb um, settings in there. The wrench there is for uh, the, the metronome, so if you want to play, and uh, make sure you got the, uh, the right rhythm down as you're, you're playing, you can do that. You can also tap out a tempo, or you can manually set your tempo if you know what you're going to be uh, creating in terms of a song's tempo. And you can also decide on what key you're going to be playing in uh, with the key button here. The uh, question mark just brings up um, help and gives you some uh, little windows that pop up that uh, give you a little bit more information in terms of what um, what things are on the screen. One thing that I'll point out is this part of this composition, this might actually make up a, lot, a larger part of a composition. If I go ahead and play this by hitting the play button, you'll notice a couple things. And one of those things that you'll notice is that this loops and it is essentially going for eight bars across the screen. And then when it gets to the end of the eighth bar, it comes back and loops over again, which is nice because what that means is I can play this and when I'm working on a different instrument, this will play in the background while I go ahead and create on uh, an additional instrument. So I get to hear what's already in there while at the same time recording a new instrument to go along with whatever the composition is. Now if I wanted to um, if I wanted to uh, create a, uh, another whole section to my song I can do that in with this little button here. It looks like a puzzle piece and this particular button allows you to create a new section. So I can duplicate something I have and if I did that, let's say I duplicate this whole section, what it does then is it takes that whole piece, duplicates it, moves it over, and I've gone from 8 bars to now 16 bars. And at this point, from say bar 9 to the end of 16, I could go ahead and uh, create additional instruments, uh, just additional pieces to this composition if I wanted to. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete that. I don't want that. And I'm going to go back to my songs and I'm going to show you a little bit how these things are actually laid out. So uh, what I'll do now is I'll create a new composition, a new song. And when you do that, you're dropped right back into your instruments. So there's a series of different instruments, everything from microphones with effects. You can plug in your electric guitar, there are drums, keyboards, and then basses and pianos and so forth and so on. There's even a loop control in here, or a loop tool, a sample tool, so you can sample some of the outside uh, things you're hearing in your environment and incorporate those into your uh, composition if you wish. Now, I mentioned here that you've got smart instruments and you've got, um, I don't know, I wouldn't call them dumb instruments, but you have non-smart instruments. And the difference between a smart instrument and a regular instrument is the fact that with a smart instrument you can actually select um, select a, a style of play. So.
and you kind of get the idea. So here I've selected number four on the on the dial here in terms of autoplay, and then I can go through and just select the different types of chords to create my music, however I chose to. So that's why these are smart. You can actually, if you go to notes, you kind of lose some of that smart, and now you've just got a, a standard guitar here. So I'm going to go back to um, my instruments. I'm going to go ahead and select some drums, and we'll, we'll lay down a rhythm track here. So this is just a classic studio kit. If I wanted to change the kit, I could do that. I could choose from any of these different types of instruments that uh, Apple has uh, recorded and programmed into GarageBand. But I'm going to stick with the classic studio kit. And we'll just go ahead and create a little uh, rhythm down. Let me see my practice here a bit. So that sounds pretty good. So I want to make sure my metronome is on. It is. It'll count me in. And let me get that rhythm set so that it taps the right rhythm. So right about a one, 160, I think, is where it was at. We'll set that. And then I'll go ahead and hit the record button. And you'll notice now it's still recording. So if I were to hit some more drums here, those particular percussion instruments would be recorded into the current eight bar section. I'm going to go ahead and stop this now. And I'm going to go back to the tracks now by hitting the tracks button. It's going to show us what that looked like. And you'll notice I was off by one bar when I started playing. So if I want to move this over, I could do that. And if I wanted to loop this all the way out, I can double click on it with my finger by tapping it twice. And you'll see this little menu pops up. Cut, copy, delete, loop, and split. And if I go ahead and say loop, what that does is it stretches this whole, uh, whole co this component of the composition out. All eight bars now. If I hit play, I'll hear it. And you notice at the end there, it, it, I missed, uh, I kind of got off the beat there. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take this and I'm going to split it right where we stretched it out here. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a little secret. One thing that you can do is you could just take one section of this particular eight bar s section of music. Actually, it's going to be the third bar right here. And I'm just going to copy this third bar out and split it and then loop, oops, and then loop that um, whole section. So that what you do is you just kind of double click on the piece. We'll try it again up here. And we choose split, and then we get this little scissor icon and we just drag it down. So now I've kind of cut this particular eight bar section of music up, this percussion session up, and I'm going to delete these other parts. So delete, delete, delete. Oops, I missed one. And then if I play this over again, and then I drag this all the way over, and then loop it all the way across all eight bars, we'll see what we have. See if we like this. Sounds good. So now I'm going to go ahead and turn off the metronome because that's a little distracting. And I'm going to add another instrument. Maybe we'll add a smart guitar. So I choose smart guitar. We select the uh, type of guitar we want. Maybe a Roots Rock. We're going to do autoplay. Let's see what this sounds like. So we've got something there we can mess with. And I'm going to go back and make sure we're starting from the beginning. 
and then hit record. I think I will turn that metronome back on now. So now we can go back to our tracks, and you'll see now we have two tracks laid down. And we can play that. And you kind of get the idea. We could go now and add uh, some bass. We could add some keyboards in here. We've got synthesizers. We could add our voice in here, voice recordings. All kinds of different tracks we could lay down to finish off this composition if we chose to. I click my songs, automatically saves. If I wanted to save or share this with somebody else, I can hit the email song to, and it goes ahead and it exports this as a uh, audio file that you can import into your uh, iTunes or uh, any kind of mp3 player. This is actually a M uh, MPEG file, M4A file. So in the next tutorial we'll look a little bit more at how you can actually experiment with some of the uh, audio recording in terms of voice and also the loops where you can create your own loops and incorporate those into GarageBand's uh, composition for creating music. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial.